bodyguards. Uh, have you ever been asked that? Yeah, you're talking about now or the past? Period. Top five. Oh, uh, man. That's tough right there. Is it? Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's tough. For me, it's tough because I'm like, I'm, a, I'm like a real fan. And then, Magic. Yeah, but it's like, for me, it's hard to say because it's like, I, I like point guards for different reasons. Okay. So it's like, most people just ask me. He might be non script. Yeah, like most people ask like, who's the top five dribbler, like point dribbling or whatever, or this era or that, or, you know, you say top five. Overall, that's that's hard. Like if anybody say they got top five overall, that's tough. For real? Yeah. That's, Point guards? Yeah, that's tough. After Magic and Isaiah and it, Kevin Johnson, I mean, it, is it hard? Nah, yeah, because most because because somebody somebody that's six nine might not think that right now. Somebody that's six foot nine might not. No, think I said somebody that's six foot might not look at Magic as a as a great point or as an all time great. I'm talking about this era. <laughs> I'm just was, talking about this era. Okay. I'm talking about person this era. You know what I'm saying? That watch and they like, well, he can't. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, what couldn't he do? No, it's just like this, right? So it's like we was having this discussion on the bus one day, right? And you know, you know, I don't want nobody to take this too crazy or whatever. So we was uh, talking about, like you said, we were talking about errors. So you know, I'm like somebody back in the days would say, um, Bob Cousy, okay, be their favorite point guard, right? right? And they might have seen this, this, this uh, things that's written down. Bob Cousy got 60 points, 50 points, you know, 16 assists, did this stuff. Right. But then it's the person of my era would be like, well, if TJ McConnell played it back then, he would be Bob Cousy and better. Okay. I get it. Yeah, you, you did what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, that's how I look. That's how I'm saying. That's how I look at it. Right. So, like, when I look at players, it's like, I look at a player like, no matter what era, could they still be the same existence? Oh, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I believe so, magic so, so is that's how I'm a factor about. today. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but how big of a factor? Triple double factor. <laughs> All right, but that's what I'm saying. So you so the way defense is going, like don't get me wrong, magic is definitely in my top five overall players. Like, but what I'm just saying is, okay, so the way they play now, you know, back in the days, could Ben Simmons been magic back then? I don't know. That, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. So it's like some some people might say yeah, some some people might say no. Some people, you know, you got people that argue, oh, Doctor J only can go right. Okay. You know, and so this is the first time you've seen somebody six nine playing a point, but we live in an era where everybody's six nine playing a point. Yeah, you're right. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong, like, Magic is top, like, you can't have a top five without Magic. That just okay. don't make sense, period. Right. But what I'm saying is this is, this, that's why it's hard for me to be like, yo, this era over that era, this era, that's why I ask you an era. You know what I'm saying? Like, people try to, like, always want to compare one There's only one person that I see right now that could have played in any era and probably still be the same, that's Jordan, to me. Could play in any era. It'd be the exact same. Exact same. You know, I think LeBron could have played in an era in a past era? And be the exact same as he is now? I I don't think so. Right. Not it was a lot more physical back then. That's my point. Right. So like a lot of stuff that get called now, when they got called then. Right. The reason why I say Jordan, because he played in the physical era. So if you take the physicalness away from Jordan and put him now, he should be off the charts. Yeah. Because we already see a version of him. We've seen two versions of him. Who the two versions? One is one is one was my close friend. That's Kobe. No doubt. And you saw how that version worked out. He dominated, and Kawhi lit it now. And you see how that version is working Kawhi. out. Kawhi. Yeah, you see that version. He's dominating now. You understand what I'm saying? They they're doing that in two different ways. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, whereas I I, I see Kawhi and I think like he has the the foundation of with Jordan, but he don't have everything else. When you say the foundation, so it's like elaborate. it's like if you say somebody's a robot or somebody else. Okay, I see. So 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 like if you if you look at the spots and everywhere he shoot from, things that he does is everything with Jordan. Oh. If you look at the the whole, I see that's that. what I'm saying. I get like for me, I process everything in in a certain way. He said the spots. Yeah. So like wherever he shoot from, 
I'm so I, when I say Jordan, like wherever he shoot from, that's where Jordan shot from. Right. Face baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Waste didn't really waste motions, none of that stuff. Yeah. So if you look at Kobe, Kobe is all that, but he has the flair of flair. Jordan. Right. Yeah, and if and if and, and if you ask me, I, I would say Jordan. I mean, Kobe is more skilled than Jordan right. overall. You understand? How so much of an impact also me and you did you have on Kobe Bryant? I've seen stories on the internet. I've seen. I mean, for me, for me, like I said, like when he met you, you already had the reputation as a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how we met. Okay, you know what I'm saying because his father, his father coached at LaSalle College, and his father was like, uh, we played that ABCD camp together you know and I I didn't I wasn't staying on the campus because I was going to summer school so I was coming in just for the games so at this point I became you know all-american so they bringing me up to the camp and like when I get there they're like oh um, you know they put me on the team so the first day I'm playing I'm like probably the biggest name on the team at this time you know so we playing and it's like a dude that's taking all the shots <laughs> no, oh yeah, like, I seen you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Cause he got in your like, like, He tripping right now. Like, like I'm the man. This he right. tripping right he keep now. Putting it up, he keep putting it up. Keep putting it up. So, so right then and then, everybody kind of knew. Like, everybody's like, man, he walk like Jordan. He act like Jordan. Right. Like, so you know, but you know, when you're young, it's like, you know. And I think, I think those life lessons for him, you know, rest in peace prepared him for the NBA right. from being like, and then I think coming from overseas helped him because he was used to being isolated it didn't seem like an act either it didn't no, 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 that. no 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 that's what I'm saying so it was like so what I mean by it is like him coming from overseas played the big part of how he handled everything because right. you know when you're young you can be cruel you know so we had a camp with 200 people and 200 people were like man that dude crazy <laughs> like, he joined up. it takes somebody with a, a strong personality yeah. to not change what they right. believe. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because most of us are, you know, we are programmed to go with the flow. And then, especially back then, if you right. don't go with the flow, then you're a problem. Yeah. You understand? Like now we have, you know, now universally we have more stuff we can say if you could go against the more flow, you're more so, of a yeah. pioneer. But right. now, but back then it was like, what? He, oh, he tripping. So then one day, but he, he could do everything. Every one thing I can say, as soon as I met him, he could do everything Jordan could do offensively, right. like fade away <laughs> everything. But he couldn't, he couldn't like really dribble that good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So his pops was like, um, "Yo, you think you got my son dribbling?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." You know, because I this I'm off him, so I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." Right. I'm like, "Well, I'll be here early," and you know, I always warm up and work out. Right. And then, you know, I was just saying some BS. Because I didn't think he was going to come anyway. Right. Right. Then he showed that I get that he already there. So then we just start working on stuff. And then, like I said, over the years, you know, I would see him and we would do stuff. And I just always took it as a friendship. You know what I'm saying? Because we just was we just was good friends. So I never looked at it as, oh, I have an impact on this person. I right. just took it like, yo, I'm in the gym working out. You want to work out? It's like you go lift weights and your man, like, yo, I'm trying to get in shape. You're like, yo, come lift weights. So I always left it like that. So I've never, so I never spoke on it. You know what I'm saying? And then, the the month before he retired, he the one that you know Boston. He did an interview and he was like, "Yo," and he was just talking about his career. Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, you know, uh, Shane about told me how to dribble, whatever, whatever." And I'm like, you know, I'm just like, oh, whatever, you know, like that. And then it just took off like wildfire. So like, so to answer the question is like. It's not for me to answer that question. I feel he already answered the question. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause, cause like me, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't. It's like now when I when I work with players now, whether it's Luca, whether whether it's me just mentoring Trey Young or Dennis from Juniors, like I always tell them, like, you know what I'm saying? I would, Trey. I would never be the one to say I made anybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the one thing you can't do, you can't bring something out of people that's not in them already. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I can do is help you. Mm-hmm. Pull it out of you, right. and that's what that's what I thought I did. So, like you know, when he spoke on it, it was just like, oh, okay, you know, he said it. So you know, everybody was like, okay, cool, that's what it is. You know, because it's, 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 it's so many people. It's funny. It's so many people that I've been in the gym with that people would never like. 
You know, like people come to me and be like, oh, this person can dribble this and that. And I'm like, and and I'm like, yo, come on, fam. (laughs) (laughs) And, but I'm not the one, I'm not the one, I'm not, you know, and there's no knock on no training, no nothing. I'm just not the one that like, yo, let's take pictures. Yo, let's post a workout. Let's do this. I just, I just don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just not into it. Anytime anything ever has been out is because somebody that I was with put it out. I've never been the one like, yo, let's do this. Let's do that. Cause it's like. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, your work gonna manifest itself. Did you see um, ball becoming so lucrative actually after actually playing, like when you look at the internet, people got merch, people trained the kids, people got just, it's, it's so much. Nah, because it's so, so many crazy. Ways. Because it's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, right. like I like to say, you know, and the reason why I say I, be, I, don't, I don't believe in, I mean, I don't really believe in that is because, you know, the people that helped me along the lines was coaches. Okay. Not like, yo, he's a trainer and this is this, you know. Like my coach was a trainer. At one point, my pops, uh, you know, I'm talking about the trainer like being like a father figure to me. At one point, okay. father figure to me, a provider, you know what I'm saying? Like coach was everything. Right. Where in my hood, coaches, a coach was everything, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it wasn't nobody. I physically, yo, I'm paying you a hundred dollars and let's go in the gym and work out. It was, right. it was a coach like doing it off the love, like, yo, yeah. nah, we're gonna get you nice, we're gonna get it, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's why it's hard for me, like, even now, when I, when I start getting into it, it's like, I, that's why I hate when people say, oh, you're a trainer, I'm like, nah, like, I help develop people. Right. I, I don't believe in training, because training is like, somebody to pay you to keep coming back to make you feel you can't do nothing without them. So like, you see, when you see people in the gym and they say, Yo, man, it's hard for me to work out, not work out without my trainer. What are you talking about? It's just somebody that's standing there next to you. I think the trainer is more so a vocal coach. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, so for me, it's like, I've always, when I, when I help develop people, I always give them enough that when they go by themselves, right. they can manifest even more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and they make it their own. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so so that's, that's just how I am when it comes to all this stuff. 